Zotto Evangelist with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. We want to thank you all so much for tuning in on this Wednesday afternoon, coming to you live from our main headquarters here in Lincoln, Rhode Island. And it is great to have all of you on our broadcast today because on today's live stream, we are going to tackle <clears throat> some rumors. <clears throat> when it comes to prophecy, the rumors fly. But I can confirm somewhat about the rumors that were flying, but nonetheless, rumors as they are. So we're going to be looking at the beast of Daniel chapter number seven. Then we're going to look at a sculpture that many today are saying is right out of the book of Daniel seven and Revelation chapter number 13. Is it really? So remember, I don't fly with rumors. And I do not embrace hype, drama, or sensationalism. Why? It's bad enough, ladies and gentlemen, that Bible prophecy, this wonderful subject that permeates at least one-fourth of Scripture, has taken a bad reputation because of off-the-wall suppositions when it comes to the study of Bible prophecy. And so we're going to look at Daniel 7. Then we'll take a look at the sculpture in New York City at the UN headquarters. So stand by for that. Now, last week, and I even think the week before that, we were having issues with the live streaming on Facebook. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to go to Facebook to see if we are live streaming there. And hopefully uh, we are. I hope I fixed the problem yesterday. I talked with the restream programmers. And they said that we should be good to go. And yeah, there we are. We are live on Facebook. So we got that taken care of. And I can see that my dear brother, Michael Popes, is there as well. So we appreciate Michael being with us. And of course, we are also um, live streaming on my uh, Twitter page. So let's make sure that. Everything is on the up and up there on Twitter. And by the way, follow me on Twitter as I list all the late breaking news articles there on Twitter. And there we are right on Twitter. And we're also going to be going to uh, YouTube, to my channel. And I also want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is August Rosado. We're also live streaming on YouTube. So it looks like everything is right there on the up and up. And so we are appreciative of that we have. Oh, we also got Michael watching on YouTube. So he's on Facebook and YouTube. And we have uh, Nancy Bartholomew, a dear friend of ours, also on uh, YouTube, Michael Pope's on YouTube, and of course, many of you uh, will be going on Facebook, and some of you watching on YouTube, and maybe even on Twitter. So right now, we are uh, simultaneously broadcasting on those three networks, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, which means you can watch on any one of those social networks. When you have a chance, subscribe to my free newsletters that go out through MailChimp every week, and hopefully we'll have them go out either today or tomorrow. It's a few weeks late, so we're going to try to get that out there. So 
I want you to subscribe to our free new newsletters by going to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Then go to contact August Rosado. Click that on. Type in your name, your email address, and just ask that you want to receive the free news letters. If you have a Facebook page, then send me a Facebook friend request because my page is public. Then subscribe to all of my videos on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is simply my name, August Rosado. So subscribe to my channel and get updated on new videos as we upload them then on twitter follow me on twitter my handle is at bible underscore prophecy that's my twitter handle and tomorrow i'll put the actual twitter hand twitter handle on there for you to see so that you can follow me on twitter as i list all the late breaking news stories right there on my twitter page also Monday through Friday, 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am on WOPW 93.3 FM out of Central Kentucky. Tune in to listen to my 15-minute broadcast on Bible prophecy. See, August, I don't live in Kentucky. You don't have to. Go to their website, WOPW.org. Click Listen Live. That's 8.15 p.m. tonight, 93.3 FM, I, uh, WOPW Radio. So hopefully you will take advantage of that. Don't forget our Prophecy Toward Israel, scheduled for April 23rd to May 3rd, 2022, with two nights in Jordan. And I will be teaching you Bible prophecy on location. As it stands, we've got about 23, 24 people still coming with us. So we still got room for you. If you want to go, let me know. I'll send you an e-brochure that has the itinerary and the registration. So you could check that out. Again, that will be the Israel Jordan Prophecy Tour, April 23rd to May 3rd. So hopefully you can come to Israel with us. We got an uh, email today from Susan Eshed of Emmanuel Tours in Israel that the Zola Levitt trip has been canceled. But they did not cancel Dr. Todd Baker and myself. So as it stands right now, we are still scheduled to go in March. The tour group will not. Because they did not have enough seats. So uh, Dr. Baker and myself are not canceled and are scheduled to go in March. But I want you to go with me in April and let me teach you Bible prophecy on location. Now, let's get into our study lesson. The Beasts. Of Daniel chapter 7. Is there any connection to the sculpture that everybody's hyping about at the UN headquarters in New York City? Let me tell you something about the UN. They're the United Nothing. They are anti Israel, headed by a bunch of anti Semites. So let me just digress on that. But is there a connection between the beast of Daniel 7 and this sculpture that's taking the internet by storm? And yeah, everyone's bombarding me with this. So I figured I would address it today. So before we do that, open your Bibles. Look with me in Daniel chapter 7, beginning in verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great 
sea. The great sea there is the Mediterranean Sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse or different, one from another. The first was like a lion. Keep that animal in mind. Lion. And had eagle's wings. Drop down to verse number five. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. This is not the Russians. The bear, I hear all these prophecy guys and some of these pastors, the bear here is a Russian. No, it isn't. And I'll show you that in a few moments. And it raised itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth between the teeth of it. Drop down to verse 6. After this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Drop down to verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue at the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before. And it had ten horns. So in Daniel's vision, we see the lion. We see the bear. We see the leopard. And we see an unidentified beast. Keep those animals in your head as we go through Study lesson, uh, I should say rather. The book of Daniel records the four great beasts in chapter number seven, and of course, representing world empires that had a significant role in world history leading up to, in the future, a final revived Roman Empire. So Daniel sees these four beasts. And again, the winged lion, the bear. Notice the three ribs in its mouth. What does that mean? Then he sees a leopard with four wings. Then he sees an unidentified animal. Many pictures that you see show it as a dragon. Well, we don't know what it is because the Bible doesn't tell us what that fourth beast is. But I do know what empire it represents. We know that the lion represented Babylon. We know the bear represents the Middle Persian Empire. The bear is lopsided, tipping in favor of the Persian Empire, because they were over the Medes, even though they functioned as one unit. The three ribs in its mouth, in the mouth of the bear, would represent Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon. And we do know that Babylon was conquered by the Medo-Persian Empire. So the bear there is not the Russians. If you want to find the Russians in prophecy, go to Ezekiel 38, verse 2. Gog, that's a person who comes from the land of Magog. That's north of the state of Israel where Russia is located today. But the bear is not the Russians here. Now, Daniel chapter 7 and verse number 1. It mentions Belshazzar. So Daniel chapter 7 verse 1 mentions Belshazzar. And yet it says, in the first year of Belshazzar. So we know that Belshazzar was co-regent with his father, Nabonidus. As co-rulers or co-kings in Babylon during the time of Daniel. But his father Nabonidus was out fighting a war, leaving his son Belshazzar in rule as the king of Babylon at that time. And, you know, this has led to many liberal critics saying, oh, there's a contradiction in the book of Daniel. Where do they see this so-called contradiction? 
Well, many of these critics of the book of Daniel seek a contradiction here in chapter 7 because Belshazzar died in Daniel chapter number 5 when the Medes and the Persians breached the massive walls and conquered the city. And again, that, that and then they look at Daniel chapter 7 and they say, well, wait a minute. We got a contradiction here because if Belshazzar died in chapter number 5, why does Daniel 7, 1 say in the first year of Belshazzar? So, August, there's got to be a contradiction here. Listen, there is no contradiction. Listen, I've said this before. I've said, you've heard me say this many times. And I've even wrote a book about it. I wrote a book called Daniel, A Chronology. You need to order that book. Go to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org, get a copy of that book. Daniel should not be read numerically. What do I mean by that? Don't read Daniel straight through chapters 1 through 12. I suggest you don't do that if you're going to read the book of Daniel. But you need to read the book of Daniel chronologically. How do you read the book of Daniel chronolo chronologically? I did you the favor and put the chronological sequence in the blue box below. You read Daniel chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, then fast forward 7, 8, then rewind 5 and 6, then fast forward again 9, 10, 11, and 12. Chronologically, that is how you should be reading the book of Daniel. Chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, and 12. That is how anybody who's a, a serious student of Bible prophecy should be reading the book of Daniel in chronological order. In Daniel chapter number 2, Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon at this time. He goes to sleep. He has a dream, a nightmare to him. And he dreams about an image. He dreams about a metallic image with distinct metal body parts. Those metal body parts would not represent individual kings, but it would represent individual empires so this dream that he had really scared him and he wakes up from the dream and he says oh i need someone to come and interpret this dream for me the story's right there in daniel chapter number two so when he sees the dream he sees that the image has a head of gold well we know that head of gold represents the babylonian empire then it had Breast and arms of silver. That represents the Middle Persian Empire. Then he sees the belly and thighs of brass. Well, that would represent the Grecian Empire under Alexander the Great, who conquered the known, the known world at a very young age, at around 32 years of age. Then he sees the legs of iron. Well, obviously, this would represent the Roman Empire, Imperial Rome. But then when he gets to the Ten Toes, which has a mixture of iron and clay, which really doesn't mix at all, this would represent the eschatological, revived Roman Empire of the future. At first, it will be unstable, but when that little horn of Daniel 7, 8 comes on the scene, out of the ten horns, he will solidify that empire and make it a force to be reckoned with. So the ten toes mixed with iron and clay would be the revival of the Roman Empire during the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy when it gives global authority to the Gentile world ruler. That dream in Daniel 2 
of that metallic image disturbed Nebuchadnezzar. And again, he seeks the interpretation, and the Jewish prophet Daniel does exactly that, interprets the dream for Nebuchadnezzar. Then he makes uh, Daniel ruler in Babylon. Actually, in Daniel chapter 7, when Daniel interprets those beasts, he's made the fourth ruler in Babylon. The image of Daniel 2 represents a succession of world empires. But we know, again, eschatologically speaking, eschatology, the, 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 the future, the doctrine of last things or the end times, we know clearly that it says in Daniel chapter 2 and verse number 44 that in the days of these kings that the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. And that kingdom will crush those ten toes. Destroy the revived Roman Empire. And that's exactly what we see in Daniel chapter Number two, the kingdom of Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach. His kingdom will overthrow all the kingdoms of the world. That's also recorded in Revelation eleven fifteen, And his kingdom will last for 1,000 years. Revelation chapter 20, 2 through 7. And will crush the final 10 toe. Revive Roman Empire, also known later as... Ten horns. Daniel chapter 7, verses 7, 20, 24. Revelation 12, 3. Revelation 13, 1. Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. Final ten horn or final ten nation. Confederacy. These ten horns will be destroyed by Jesus at his second coming back to this earth. And this is exactly what Daniel chapter 2 Verses 35 and 45 talk about when Jesus returns at a second coming, he will come down from heaven as a great stone. And that stone will crush those ten toes of the revived Roman Empire. And then that stone will become a great mountain and will fill. The whole entire earth. A reference, a clear reference to the millennial kingdom reign of the Lord Jesus. Jesus as the stone will crush the final ten-toe confederacy of the revived Roman Empire. And this is, again, this is exactly how Daniel lays it out. The stone is Jesus coming from heaven, his second coming will destroy the ten-nation confederacy. The stone now becomes a great mountain filling the whole entire earth. A reference to the millennial kingdom reign of Yeshua, the Messiah, from Jerusalem during the theocratic rule from David's throne. A theocracy will be restored. Right now, we are not under that theocracy. We are under a satanocracy. And we have been under a satanocracy since Genesis chapter 3 with the fall of Adam and Eve. We have been under a satanocracy. How do I know that? Satan is the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says. The prince and the power of the air, Ephesians 2.2. 2. He can transform into an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11.14. So we are right now under a satanocracy. You see, in Genesis 1 and 2, the world was under a theocracy. God ruled over his perfect creation before the fall. But after the fall, Genesis 3, that theocracy changed into a satanocracy. And that satanocracy will continue up until Revelation 19 at Jesus' second coming back to this earth. Then he will establish, reestablish, I should say, a theocracy that will be Revelation chapters 19 through 22. After Nebuchadnezzar's dream of this, this distinct metal image in Daniel 2, we now fast forward 
500 years later from Daniel 2 to Daniel 7. Daniel has, it's not really a, uh, it's not a dream, but Daniel has a vision. And this vision is of wild beasts. This, this vision is of wild animals, and these animals are pretty significant. And again, we see these four beasts in Daniel chapter number 7. Again, we're going to put, the, put that up on the screen. We see these visions uh, of the four beasts in Daniel chapter number 7. Again, this is 500 years after Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the metallic image in Daniel 2. Daniel sees four beasts that also represent world empires, not individual kings as, as some are erroneously teaching today. They are world empires. Now, as I said already, the winged lion represents Babylon, the head of gold in Daniel 2. And then the breast and arms of, you see the bear there with the three ribs in its mouth. The bear represents the Medo-Persian Empire. The breast and arms of silver in Daniel 2. As I told you already, the bear has three ribs in its mouth. It's lopsided, tipping in favor of the Persians over the Medes, even though they function as one military unit. And the three ribs would represent, uh, in the mouth of the bear, would represent Egypt, that was conquered by Assyria, and then conquered by Babylon. Then later on, Babylon is conquered by the Medo-Persian Empire, 539 B.C. Then we see the leopard with four wings. The leopard represents the Grecian Empire. But when Alexander the Great died in 333 B.C., his kingdom was divided among his four generals, represented by those four wings on the leopard. Then we see that unidentified beast. And it doesn't tell us who it is. It's not a hippopotamus. doesn't say it's a giraffe. doesn't say it's a kangaroo. But it is an empire, no doubt, the Roman, imperial Roman empire. So the winged leopard would be the uh, belly and thighs of brass. And the fourth beast that's unidentified would be the legs of iron, Rome. In Daniel chapter number 2. So this is exactly what Daniel saw 500 years later after Nebuchadnezzar saw that image in Daniel chapter number 2. Now, I have been getting messages from people all over the United States. Hey, August, did you see this? Hey, August, did you read this? About the UN sculpture in New York City at the UN headquarters. And they're saying, oh, August, you got to see this. It is right out of the book of Daniel concerning the four beasts. Now, if you've known me for a while, you know that I do not get carried away with things that other people post on Facebook, especially Facebook, because you know as well as I do, we have been down this road before with wild, imaginative, imaginative speculations and suppositions. So I did a little digging myself, and then I decided to go to Snopes.com. Now, if you're familiar with Snopes, Snopes is a fact-checking news website that either debunks or confirms stories that are circulating around the world of the Internet. So then I decided 
to go to Snopes and found this story here. A United Nations and Times sculpture. The installation of a sculpture of a winged jaguar outside the UN headquarters inspired apocalyptic rumors. And I do trust Snopes because they, they're fact checkers. Not like the fact checkers that Facebook uses. These guys are fact checkers. So I read this article of the sculpture in New York. The report said this began the apocalyptic prophecy rumors that the sculpture is a winged lion in New York City at the UN headquarters. It is not. The prophecy rumorville said the artwork depicted an end time sculpture of a beast out of Daniel chapter 7 and out of Revelation chapter number 13. Folks, it's, it, it's not even close. Not even close. So what is this sculpture in New York City? So I want all of you to take a gander at the sculpture in New York City. Okay? It is a genuine sculpture. It is at the UN headquarters in New York City. And we can right now confirm that. Because it seems to resemble Daniel's image, many assume it is the beast of Revelation chapter 7. It is a winged lion. It is not a winged lion. First off, the statue was created to depict a, quote, guardian of peace and security sculpture, end quote. It is not the beast, the four beasts, mentioned in Daniel chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 13. Okay? It is not a winged lion. It's a winged jaguar. There is no mention in the book of Daniel or the book of Revelation of a winged jaguar. Do not confuse the leopard with a jaguar. Because you'll have some arguing, well, the leopard is a jaguar. No, it isn't. You go and you Google that. Two different species here. It is not a leopard. It is a jaguar. They are two different animal species. Also, this is not the first time that the United Nations in the past have had winged cats in front of their headquarters. The sculpture at the UN now is a jaguar with eagle's wings. It is not, and I repeat, it is not a winged lion. And it was created by Jacobo and Maria Angelis as a, quote, again, guardian for international peace and security. That's what they named it. Quote, guardian for international peace and security, end quote. And it was donated to the United Nation by the government of Oaxaca, Mexico, of this month, December 2021. The artists claim on their website, and you can go to their website, JacobiMariaAngelis.com, where they said, they created two guardian sculptures and sent them to New York City on a mission of, quote, accompanying and protecting all Latin American, Mexican, and Oxycon uh, migrants who live or are about to arrive in the United States looking for a better future for their families, end quote. That's the purpose of that sculpture in New York at the UN headquarters. So, <laughs> folks, listen. This has nothing to do with the four beasts of Revelation 7, excuse me, Daniel 7 and Revelation 13. 
while social media users claim that the statue installed in front of the UN was some sort of apocalyptic sign or warning. Statues depicting large cats with wings. Listen, they can be found all over the world. So why isn't anybody making a big deal about that? We can, listen, we can find winged animals anywhere. Anywhere, all over the world. The following photos that you see on your screen are, are, screen are examples. You can find these winged animals in Venice, Italy, Leicester, England, the Prague, Czech Republic, and Madrid, Spain. They're everywhere. The UN, excuse me, the uh, European Union headquarters has a sculpture of a woman riding on a beast. Now, I find that to be pretty significant. Why? Because Revelation 17.3 talks about a woman riding a beast. So I, I do see a connection there. But I don't see the connection with this winged jaguar and the four beasts of Daniel 7 and Revelation 13 because Daniel and Revelation do not talk about a jaguar. One of the animals listed there are not jaguars. It's so a winged lion, a bear with three ribs and his mouth lopsided, a winged leopard, and an unidentified beast. So again, folks, we really need to be very careful with this. Because once again, it gives a bad name to the study of Bible prophecy. Daniel 7 sees a vision of four great beasts coming from the Great Sea. Now you see that word in the Bible, Great Sea? That's the Mediterranean Sea on the west coast of the state of Israel. And again, it depicts in Daniel the winged lion, Babylon. The bear, not the Russians, the bear, the Medo-Persian Empire. The winged leopard, the Grecian Empire, under Alexander the Great. The fourth beast, not identified, but undoubtedly Imperial Rome, the revived Roman Empire. And out of that revived, ten-nation revived Roman Empire will arise a little horn, Daniel 7, 8. And we know that little horn is the prince that shall come, Daniel 9, 26, known as the beast, Revelation 13, 1, because we know the beast is energized by the dragon, Revelation 12, 3. The dragon is Satan. The three personalities, unholy personalities of the tribulation period. The dragon, Revelation 12, 3, Satan. The beast, Revelation 13, 1, the false prophet, excuse me, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, Revelation 13, 11. Those are the three unholy personalities in the tribulation period. So the little horn is the Antichrist, 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 18. <clears throat> then we see in Revelation chapter 13 and verse number Two, and I'm going to read that for you uh, quickly. Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 2. John sees 500 years later what Daniel saw. And uh, we read in Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, not a jaguar, leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a Lion and the dragon, that Satan, gave him, the beast, the Antichrist, his power and his seat and great authority. So we see the leopard, the bear, and the lion mentioned in Revelation 13, 2. Three of the four that are mentioned in Daniel chapter number 7. And we see that the Antichrist is the outgrowth of those empires in Revelation. And he is given authority by the final ten-horn Gentile world power that will be crushed at Jesus' second coming back to this earth. That's why Daniel 2.35, Daniel 2.45 says this 
great stone comes from heaven and smokes or crushes the ten toes of that image. And that stone becomes a, becomes a massive mountain. Mountain in Hebrew, Har, H-A-R, becomes a great mountain and fills the entire earth. A direct reference to the millennial kingdom reign of the Lord Jesus. Now, in closing, I do not see the UN sculpture in New York as a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Some of you are probably shocked right now. Okay, because it's not a winged lion. Okay, it's not, the. it, it, it doesn't have the head of a lion, the head of a bear, the head of a leopard. That, it, it's, it's a jaguar. <laughs> it's a winged jaguar. Now, that doesn't mean that the people who created it probably did not have Daniel 7 in mind, but they're not saying that. But it is a winged jaguar that was donated to the UN to represent peace and international security for all Latino Mexicans living in the United States or about to come into the United States. That That's all that statue or that sculpture represents. However, it does remind us that Bible prophecy will be fulfilled when the final revived Roman Empire comes into play. That means, folks, stage is set or being set. The actors are getting into position and the curtain is about to go up on the end time drama because we know the next main event on God's calendar of activities is the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. Remember, there are no signs that precede the rapture. And no prophecies have to be fulfilled. The rapture is imminent. Imminent simply means something hanging over your head about to befall or overtake you. That is the rapture. No man knows the day nor the hour. And no signs or prophecies precede it. All we can say to that is, in closing, Maranatha, even so come, Lord Jesus. And listen, if you do not know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm here to tell you, today is a day of salvation because tomorrow just might be too late for you. Right now, you need to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. And if you don't have that assurance of going to heaven when you die, I'd love to talk with you, show you from the Bible how you can know for sure without a shadow of a doubt that one day heaven will be your destination. And you'll be ready for either one or two things, either death or the next main event we call the rapture of the church. So <clears throat> Michael says, hey, man, I switched from Facebook to YouTube because the sound is better. That doesn't say much for Facebook, <laughs> Michael. So I'm so glad uh, that uh, you guys have decided to join us on today's broadcast. Hopefully we cleared some uh, things up. And uh, let's see here. We got also Amanda Tatro watching. Zeke Gaza. Zeke, it's been a long time, buddy. Good to see you. Robbie Lincoln. Robbie, hope you're feeling better, brother. Get well soon, man. And my dear friend, John Webb is watching as well. We also are live streaming on Twitter and, of course, on Facebook. So, folks, as I said, uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in on today's broadcast. I hope to see you all tomorrow, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another Bible prophecy update as we look at the political setting the stage for the prophetic to be fulfilled. And again, when you have an opportunity, visit my website todayinbibleprophecy.org. Order my new book, Daniel, a chronology. Our gifts for
from Israel. We just got shofars and ram's horns, star of David necklaces. We got all those good things in. So take advantage of that. It's Christmas. Take advantage of it. My son, my grandson Levi, his birthday was the day before yesterday. He always wanted a shofar from Israel. So we gave him a ram's horn, a shofar with a guide and everything. And puppet you're gonna have to teach me how to blow what he says. Of course I will. And you should have saw his face, a nine-year-old. He was like, I finally got a, a, a shofar from Israel. And he was just absolutely ecstatic by that. But we have them available on our bookstore. And folks, again, you know, we survive because of you. I, I don't have a nine to five job. That's not what God's called me to do. Not that I'm above that, but it's not what the Lord's called me to do. God has called me into full-time ministry. And we enjoy traveling all across America, preaching prophecy. We enjoy going to Israel four times a year. Whenever they decide to open the borders again, we go to Israel four times a year. Three of those times, evangelizing Jews and Arabs out there and then taking tour groups over there in the spring. Being, I've been going to Israel, I've been there 27 times. And I'm hoping we can get back there soon. And all these graphics that you see on the screen, I mean, these things cost money. Being on radio in Kentucky, these things cost money. So if you've been blessed by our teaching, because you know there's no nonsense here. There's no drama, no hype, or nothing like that. We just look at the scriptures. That's it. We look at the political going on in the world, and then we look at the scriptures. Because the political is set in the stage for the prophetic to be fulfilled. So if we have been a blessing to you, would you prayerfully consider donating to us, whether it's a one-time gift, <clears throat> whether it's a monthly gift, every other month, weekly, bi-weekly? We depend on your support. So you can use the PayPal link that you see right there on your screen. Take a picture of it do, it, do what you need to do, copy it, and go to our PayPal link to our website, and you can put whatever you feel the Lord's telling you to give. If you don't use PayPal, you want to send a check or money order, you can do so for your support to Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 143 Grove Street, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 028. Six, five. So I hope to see you all tomorrow, Thursday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another Prophecy Update. So remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. The rapture must be so close at hand. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Lord willing, we'll see you all tomorrow, if not sooner. God bless. Bye.